Good evening. I'm Corinne Canal. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we will take a closer look at Mel Levine's neurodevelopmental model in cognitive neuropsychology as they relate to students with mild to moderate disabilities. Joining us is Mel Levine, a pediatrician and professor at the University of North Carolina Medical School. He is the author of several books, including A Mind at a Time and The Myth of Laziness. He served as Senior Clinical Consultant to Success in Mind and was co-founder of All Kinds of Minds, a nonprofit institute for the understanding of differences in learning, which provides professional development to assist K-12 educators in using neurodevelopmental content in their classrooms. Also joining us is Dr. Claybaugh, a leading cognitive neuropsychologist in the field. Welcome. <coughs> Sorry, I'm late. Got stuck on the freeway. Oh, welcome, Dr. Levine. Dr. Levine, would you please tell us a little bit about your philosophy? Oh, well, um, thank you for having me tonight. I strongly believe that planet Earth is inhabited by all kinds of people who have all kinds of minds. The brain of each human is unique. Some minds are wired to create symphonies and sonnets, while others are fitted out to build bridges, highways and computers, design airplanes and road systems, drive trucks and taxi cabs, or seek cures for breast cancer and hypertension. Thank you, Dr. Levine. Dr. Claybaugh, would you please share with us your thoughts on cognitive neuropsychology? I'd be happy to, Ms. Kenna. Cognitive neuropsychology focuses on individuals with deficits in brain functioning caused by either brain injuries or developmental disabilities. As a cognitive neuropsychologist, I aim to understand how the structure and function of the brain relates to specific psychological processes and place particular emphasis on study of the cognitive effects of brain injury or neurological lines. Cognitive neuropsychology is the study of what is taking place in the brain when a person is thinking and learning. Cognitive neuropsychology not only works to figure out how the brain impacts learning, but also how learning impacts the brain. For instance, some claims indicate that children who have been surrounded by audiovisual stimuli since birth are primed to learn best and fastest when new information is presented in such a format. Thank you, Dr. Claybaugh. Dr. Levine, I would love to hear your neurodevelopmental model. Thank you. I aim to focus on why children struggle in school and provide a straightforward practical system for recognizing variations in the way children learn without labeling them, but rather using their strengths to help them become more successful students. My neural development model dissects the learning process into eight neurodevelopmental systems. Attention control, memory, language, spatial ordering, sequential ordering, motor, higher thinking, and social thinking. My theory is that struggling students are experiencing a breakdown in one or more of these areas. My colleagues will touch on some of the eight constructs later in our broadcast. Utilizing a strengths-based perspective, parents and teachers are encouraged to identify what the child does well and where his or her interests lie. Then use this information to help the student develop weaker areas and enhance areas of strength. That's very interesting, Dr. Levine. Like you, cognitive psychologists study people with disorders of attention, memory, processing of spoken and written language, and thinking. But we also study perception, learning, reasoning, or belief formation with the aim of learning more about the normal functional cognitive processing systems used to carry out these activities. Cognitive neuropsychologists believe the brain gets better or healthier with more use and declines when left dormant. I'd really like to hear from each of you a little bit about the assessment process. Well, I'll start. Um, I believe in evaluating students' abilities and describing what can be done to improve areas of weakness while encouraging areas of strength. 
Background information needs to be gathered from parents and observational data needs to be collected from classroom teachers. Examination of typical samples of a student's work should be collected and educational history in the early grades should be noted. Direct testing of re relevant neurodevelopmental functions, achievement testing, especially analysis of specific subskills and their breakdowns. Intelligent testing should be looked at as well, but not if the IQ gets used, abused as the so-called gold standard. Asking the student where he struggles. Don't ever forget to have the student evaluate or diagnose himself. It is truly an interdisciplinary collaboration. Kids need to know themselves and they need to know what to work on to help themselves. Telling a student he is learning disabled or has attention deficit disorder is not very helpful. My colleagues and I highlight specific strengths and weaknesses, a process I refer to as demystification. As neuropsychologists, we study brain behavior relationships by studying patients who have suffered some form of brain injury or trauma. For example, returning from war, people who have suffered a stroke. We also study, study brain deficits caused by developmental disorders or disorders of impaired ability resulting from a disability. Theories and hypotheses are made to explain the dysfunctions. Then we map the beginnings and execution of specific information processing tasks to regions of the brain. Hmm, Dr. Levine, it has been noted that your ideas have attracted some criticism. The stories provided are anecdotal, unconfirmed by peer review. Critics also fault your books for not having footnotes or appendices where serious research could be discussed. I have no comment, but to refer you to the countless testimonials by parents and teachers that swear by my methods. Dr. Claybaugh, cognitive neuropsychology, on the other hand, is research-based and generally doesn't focus on diagnosing or treating patients. Yes, Ms. Kana, you are correct. Cognitive neuropsychology is evidence-based on case studies of individual brain damaged patients who show deficits in brain areas. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you both very much for taking the time to speak with us today. You are very welcome. You are welcome. And might I add, you look fabulous today. Oh, thank you, Dr. Levine. Goodbye.